Hey everybody, Shark Scrapper here. Yeah, I know you don't recognize me without the shades and the hat and the shark mask and everything, but trust me, it's me. Um, I would, I've uh, had a couple requests now to take a little bit deeper dive on tantalum and MLCCs. So I thought we would first attack tantalums uh, because it's a really interesting uh, question and discussion. So without uh, going into the science and chemistry of tantalums and how you extract the tantalum, what I want to talk about in this video is how to identify the tantalum capacitors on a circuit board and uh, then the way that I keep them. All right, so let's first take a look at some typical boards. You see here an assortment of circuit boards that have tantalum capacitors on them. Uh, this is an older circuit board. It is what's classified as a large socket green motherboard. And right here you can see these nice mustard or yellow colored tantalum capacitors with the orange band on one side that is to identify uh, the polarity for when they are put on the boards. For us, it's very useful because it helps us to identify that as a tantalum capacitor. Now, because this board is going to get sold to board sort as a large socket, I'm not going to do any depopulating on this board. If you want to see how I remove tantalum capacitors, uh, go ahead and check out my video. Uh, on depopulating boards. I'll put a link in it here and down in the description below so that you can see how I depopulate these. All right, now, this board here is a pretty classic telecom grade board. Uh, came out of probably a Cisco. Uh, yes, it was a Cisco because I can see Cisco on the board. So. Uh, duh, it says Cisco right there, right? So, um, what you can see on this board is right here is a black tantalum. However, notice that there's no plus sign on the capacitor itself. It's just a gray bar. My research so far says that a plus sign will always be a tantalum, but a bar could be tantalum or niobium. I treat them the same I take it off, I put them in the same container for the time being because I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to keep them separate to sell them uh, to different processors or if I'm going to try to extract the material myself. Haven't decided yet. So here I have zoomed in on a large socket motherboard, uh, a different one. And um, it has two very good examples of what we're talking about. In the upper right-hand corner, you see a tantalum, a black tantalum capacitor. It's very clearly got the plus sign on it. In the middle of the socket, you see what could be either a tantalum capacitor or a niobium capacitor. Uh, I haven't looked up the markings on that capacitor yet to see if it helps me to understand which is which but that's why I just put them all in the same container. If you look down at the bottom of the screen, a little bit to the right, you can see side by side a tantalum with a plus sign and a niobium or tantalum. So you can see how this gets just a little bit confusing. Just put them all in the same bucket and don't worry about it for right now, uh, you know, and figure out what you're gonna do with them later on. Now, here you can see this device This is probably also a tantalum capacitor. It's got the bar, the silver bar at one end. It is a capacitor, CR35. Uh, and the bar would just define the polarity end for the connection. Uh, I'd have to look up the part number on this one to be sure that this is in fact a tantalum capacitor. Uh, but they do come in cylindrical shapes. Here's another older motherboard and this motherboard you can see these bead shaped 
tantalum capacitors. And these are epoxy coated. Uh, some people refer to these as jelly bean. And here is a board. Uh, in fact, if I flip this board this way, you can see that it's identical in layout, kinda. Uh, but the capacitors are orange instead of the mustard color. So, here we go, we'll get a little closer there. So you can see that they can be orange colored as well. Now, how do you tell that this is a tantalum capacitor? On this one, you can see right here, this line, that's the same as the line on the black or the mustard colored one telling which end is the positive end. Sometimes that's going to be an L shape. Usually on the mustard colored ones, it is an L shape and we can't get that one up, but that's okay because I'm going to show you here in just a minute with some that I've pulled off. Uh, this is a little bit newer motherboard. This is still a large socket green and you can see again we've got the mustard colored tantalums uh, with the orange stripe showing the polarity. So these are my working jars. I have larger containers that these get put into once these are full. And we'll start out with the blacks. So here you see I have uh, niobiums and tantalums all mixed together. Let's find one with a plus sign on it. So here you see a tantalum with the plus sign on it. And here you see a similar sized one, no plus sign. So this one is definitely tantalum. This one is probably niobium based on my research so far. Again, I just keep them all in one place. Most of you have probably uh, just heard that it that they're all tantalums and that was the premise that I operated on for a long time until um, another scrapper pointed out to me and then I of course did what I always do and you know did a deep dive into it and you know said yeah that's there's there is those are niobiums and here you see various sizes of the mustard colored ones nothing in my research uh, has told me so far that the niobiums come in the yellow color um, what I've learned so far is that if it's yellow with the bar, it's tantalum. <clears throat> if anybody knows different on these and you can give me some references, please do so. Leave some comments with references so that I can make sure that um, this is as factual as possible. Okay, so here we see a number of miscellaneous different kind of other tantalums. All right. Here's one of the cylindrical shaped ones. Here's a ball shaped one. Oops, there's a ball shaped one. This is probably not tantalum. I pulled it to, so I could research the part numbers and such. All right, um, but uh, I've, I've heard that there are tantalums that come that, like that. That could just be a ceramic. Here is a very good example of the epoxy orange older style with the L shaped showing where the plus side is. These also come in bullet shapes like that. This one's trying to run away, but here you can see this one broke open and there's the actual tantalum inside there. And you can see there's some reds and some oranges. So these older epoxy colored ones, uh, epoxy coated ones can come in some different shapes and sizes. There are other varieties that are larger and cylindrical shape. I don't have any of those yet. Okay, time for a little geek out here. Tantalum, abbreviated TA, is atomic number 73 on the periodic table. It was discovered in 1802 by Anders Gustav Eckenberg. 
it is found with niobium, this is going to get interesting, in a material called columbite. Now tantalum develops an oxide layer that forms uh, an insulating or dielectric layer and that's why it has such a high capacitance and such a small volume. Uh, it has no immune response in mammals. This is something I didn't know. Uh, so it's frequently used in medical industry as well. Medical implants, it can replace bone, uh, and it can connect torn nerves and muscles. It's very resistant to corrosion. So it is used in turbine blades, rocket nozzles, and as the nose cones on supersonic aircraft. Pretty interesting. Now, we all know that tantalum is a high-risk supply material. Uh, it is mm, uh, the top three producers are Brazil, Rwanda, and China. And the top reserve holders are Brazil, Australia, and Mozambique. Uh, so very important to a lot of industries, but very high supply chain risk. That's why it's probably worth pulling these and finding someone who will buy them from you uh, to process out the tantalum. Now, let's talk about niobium for just a minute. Niobium and tantalum are very similar. In fact, um, they were discovered at the same time. People just didn't realize it because they're both in columbite. Um, but uh, officially, Charles Hatchett was the one that discovered niobium in 1801. Uh, it was called something different and was renamed niobium once it was figured out that it was a separate element from tantalum. Uh, niobium, uh, by the way, it's named after the Greek uh, mythological daughter of King Tantalus that tantalum was named after because they're so close together. Uh, it's also interesting, niobium's Atomic number 41 puts it directly above tantalum in the periodic table. Now, niobium's primary uses are as uh, alloying material in stainless steel uh, jet engines, rockets, beams, girders. Uh, it has superconducting properties. It's also added to glass because it allows you to make corrective glasses that are much thinner. But niobium in some applications also has capacitance capabilities similar to tantalum. It's not as good, but it's good enough for some applications and it's a lot cheaper. So that's why you will find niobium capacitors on boards and why they can replace the tantalum capacitors and why it's so confusing to figure out which one is which. Niobium is also considered a very high supply risk element uh, because it's found in the same material that tantalum is, columbite, uh, so mined in the same places, same challenges. Uh, it is very difficult to separate tantalum and niobium from each other, so that's why I'm probably going to end up selling this material to uh, a company that specializes in the extraction and separation of the elements. Tantalum capacitors, don't get too wrapped around the axle, okay? It's really pretty simple. Um, the uh, black, you can just put the niobiums and the tantalums together for the time being. You can separate them if you want to. Uh, and uh, as far as the yellows go, uh, I separate the older epoxy colored coated ones from the newer uh, square ones. If I go to sell them, you know, it's going to be however the person that buys them from me wants them segregated. So they may just say dump them all in one bag and be done with it. So that's the way we'll proceed on those. Don't forget if you want to see how I depopulate tantalum capacitors, MLCCs, anything from these circuit boards, I have a video on depopulating boards. There's a big old link for you. Uh, it is time stamped with bookmarks so that you can easily find your way to the components that you're interested in. We're going to save MLCCs for another video. I hope you all enjoyed this one. I look forward to chatting with you all again later on.